Hey everybody, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM. Up next, we continue our salute to producer Alan Ladd Jr., the son of actor Alan Ladd. Laddie, as he's known, was instrumental in getting some of the biggest movies to the big screen, including Young Frankenstein, Braveheart, Star Wars, and the movie we have coming up next from 1983, The Right Stuff. Joining me to discuss the movie and the career of Alan Ladd Jr. is Stanley Isaacs. Stanley produced and directed a documentary about Ladd. Stanley, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So The Right Stuff is an interesting story because as, as we mentioned as we were tossing to the movie from the documentary, uh, despite the fact that he produced it, eight nominations, four Oscars, uh, Alan Ladd Jr. claims he's never seen the final product. That's what he says. <laughs> it is quite amazing. It was um, Ladd requested cuts to the film. He felt, as he said in the documentary, it should be under three hours. By the way, a producer is saying that a movie should be under three hours. That doesn't sound unreasonable. Well, but it was a massive story. <laughs> it was I mean, a you're telling story. a massive story. And, and I was at that screening that was depicted, that we talk about at the Castro Theater in, in San Francisco. The premiere? It, the premiere, well, it was the first, one of the first public screenings for, it was a test market screening. Gotcha. And halfway through the screening that night, I remember the air conditioning went out in the theater and not one soul got up to leave. I mean, they were riveted to the screen. They were watching the picture. And it was July in San Francisco, so it was a pretty nasty night. But the, the picture played great, but then there was a meeting afterwards talking about what cuts and what changes needed to be made. And Phil Kaufman apparently agreed to make them. Then Ladd, as he said, got sick, went to the hospital. When he came back, everything that they asked to be cut was put back in. Prior to the existence of the Ladd Company, Alan Ladd Jr. was an executive at Fox. Correct. And sort of the thought was that he would stay forever. Uh, what caused him to leave and then start this company that was wildly successful on its own? As I understand it, mm -hmm. now again, this is my understanding. I can't vouch for the authenticity of all the facts. <laughs> but the success of Star Wars was so enormous that Ladd went to management and felt that his top executives deserved some kind of a bonus for the work and the success of the movie. And when it didn't get done, in a fit, as Mel Brooks said, just quite unexpectedly and uncharacteristically, Ladd felt that he had to just quit. He couldn't stay there. He left and started the new company, the Ladd Company, and he was releasing all of his films then through Warner Brothers. I imagine leaving Fox as an executive and going to start your own company, given the enormous success that the company had, it was also a, turned out to be a, a financially wise decision for Alan Ladd Jr. Well, it was, it, it was, they had some enormously successful movies. There's no question about it. I mean, again, like we talked earlier about Police Academy, this was a little movie that everybody was just kind of like, yeah, go right. make it, you know, and what it spawned six sequels and, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue, you know, on a movie that had a shoestring budget compared to, you know, the, the, most of the other projects that, you know, the, compared to the right stuff or Once Upon a Time in America were very expensive. Uh, Alan Ladd Jr. seems, as it comes through in your documentary, which we aired earlier tonight, there'll be an encore presentation uh, later tonight after we have Chariots of Fire, that, that he was a handshake guy. Like, you could convince him in the room and he'd say, okay, we've settled on $8 million, shake his hand, and the, then drawing up the papers was a mere formality. That was the way business was done with him. I mean, it was... It was an understanding. He trusted the people that he worked with, and he, people trusted him. So that gets a little bit to why he might have had a problem with Philip Kaufman, because here on The Right Stuff, uh, it goes way over budget. Way over budget. Usually when there is that kind of fight between the producer and the director and that sort of runaway budget, I find, I, I don't have empirical evidence of this, but generally there's something wrong with the movie. In the case of The Right Stuff, it, in the end, the finished product still turned out great. It's an almost perfect film. I have my considerations about what knowing what they wanted to cut but i i look at it and i think it's a, such a great slice of americana and american history all right well we'll talk more about that after the movie here it is though from 1983 directed and written by philip kaufman and starring sam shepherd scott glenn ed harris and dennis quaid the right stuff I'm back with Stanley Isaacs here to discuss the right stuff and the career of his friend, producer Alan Ladd Jr. So uh, we talked a little about uh, Ladd's conflict with the writer and director, Philip Kaufman, who he doesn't even name, just refers to <laughs> as the, the director. So uh, the story, to remind people, uh, Kaufman kept uh, about 15 minutes in the movie. Ladd had wanted it brought in under three hours. Right. It's about 3.15. Do you know, as Ladd told you, what he wanted cut, more or less? The best of my recollection, a lot of it involved the end of the movie and, and wanting to end on a much more dramatic note with the Chuck Yeager story with the crash of the plane 
and some of that stuff in Houston with the fan dance and uh, kind of slowed, slowed the, the whole momentum, momentum of the down. movie, and it didn't build to that great crescendo. You know. What's amazing is in a, in a three hour and 15 minute movie about the Mercury 7 is that of course it just ends, at some point you have to end the story because the story continues and mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I mean obviously you know a movie with uh, a terrific performance by Fred Ward uh, as, as Gus Grissom in the movie but obviously there's a lot more to Gus Grissom's story. Well you know it's funny you mentioned Fred Ward. When we first saw the movie with us, with the great ensemble cast, and most of these guys were relatively brand new to the audiences. My wife and I both felt Fred Ward was going to have a major career. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we, that, in that Bogart esque kind of character, hound, hang dog look, mm -hmm. and it just, for whatever reason, it didn't quite connect. You know, whereas Scott Glenn and Ed Harris and Dennis Quaid. And Sam Shepard you know, to some extent. Too. Sam, yeah, yeah right. to more than some extent. Well, I mean, but most but, of it as a writer. But, but I, I, I have my feeling that Fred Ward had his, he did that Remo Williams movie. Mm -hmm. And I think if that had worked as a franchise, his career might have he gone off in a different the, direction. Yeah, yeah, he's a terrific actor. Fred Ward, Robert Forrester, are, 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 I always put them together. Two They're of my two, favorites. Two of my favorites, that's right. So, um, uh, did, uh, is, is Laddie, is Alan Ladd Jr., is he retired? Does he? No, he's still active. I mean, I know he's got a couple of projects. If you check out on the IMDB page, I think there's one or two projects that he's still attached to. Um, but not nowhere near as active as he was. Um, and I, he still sees his friends every week for lunch. And I'm sure they're always talking new projects. You've been to that lunch, yeah? I have. I stumbled into one. It was the greatest 90 minutes of, 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 not the greatest 90 minutes of my life, but a pretty great 90 minutes. It's pretty amazing. I mean, just when you stop and think about the history that these men have and the fact that they're friends for so many years in a business that's pretty disposable. Yeah. You know, these guys sit there and they enjoy each other's company and they share so many, they, they've been a part of each other's lives. For, again, we're talking the mid 70s and earlier with Jay. Jay Cantor, who was an agent and then a producer, Alan Ladd, agent and then a producer, Mel Brooks, Richard Donner, the mm -hmm. director, Michael Gruskoff, a producer, and uh, I, I think it's Jay Cantor's line in your documentary that uh, they've been going to lunch so long they used to talk about girls. My favorite line, I love that. Now they, 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 we used to talk about girls, now we talk about, we think about girls, but we talk about doctors. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which Stanley, is great. Uh, great stuff, thanks very Thank much. Thank you very much. Up next, Stanley and I return to introduce another Alan Ladd Jr. production, the Best Picture Oscar winner for 1981.